This video talks about how cardiac pressure has an effect on our JVP. JVP and cardiac pressure should align exactly with each other because these timings are very, very quick and exact. So we should have to be able to recognize what we are talking about between JVP and cardiac pressure. Notice how I'm saying cardiac pressure and I'm not saying atrial or ventricular pressure because really, uh, we are comparing ventricular and atrial pressure of the left side with the JVP, which is on the right side. And that's how the diagram is depicted, so don't get confused. But even though we're talking about the left side, which it primarily, ha primarily has its pressure, which primarily determines the pressure of the entire heart, uh, the JVP is going to be equally affected because the timings are almost at the same time with the left side and the right side. So let's first um, look at the graph and see what's going on uh, in terms of uh, different locations. So when we're looking at this red line, that is our ventricular pressure. Okay, The red line is our ventricular pressure. That black dotted line is going to be our atrial pressure. By the way, it's left ventricular pressure and the, the black dotted line below is our left atrial pressure. And this black dotted line on top is the aortic pressure. Okay, so we're clear with that. And this is obviously our jugular venous pressure. So obviously we know from the diagram, we have done these questions many times and we know where the aorta opens and aorta close. Obviously this is where the aorta opens and this is where the aorta close. It's very, very obvious from this diagram. But what is not is so obvious is when the mitral close and the mitral open. Have you ever thought about mitral? Because that's also important. And believe me, we have to know exactly where the mitral opens and mitral close. Okay, I have a trick here that I found through a lot of practice to know exactly where the mitral close and mitral open. See the dotted line, the black dotted line, and the red line? Wherever these two dotted lines, the red line and the dotted line, dotted line intersect, which is right here at this very point, that's when the mitral close. And again, when the dotted line meets the red line, so pretty much ventricular pressure meets the atrial pressure, that's when the mitral opens okay it's not before it's not after it's when they cross each other that's exactly where the mitral open and mitral close now that we have determined those we can now compare it with our jugular venous pressure with the cardiac pressure both atrial and ventricle so we know that from my previous uh, from our previous uh, video on JVP we know that A4A is atrial contraction so that's atrial contraction of our JVP, right? So this is our atrial contraction. So let's follow this straight up. Let's see what happens. So when we follow this, we come right before our mitral close. Also notice that the time when, when the mitral close and the tricuspid close is also almost the exact time. Uh, they might be a little bit off, but they're almost at the exact time. So we can see how the atria contracts, the pressure is pushed back onto the JVP, which is felt on the JVP as the A wave, and that's right after the atrial contraction, the mitral is going to close, which makes complete sense. After the atria contract, we have the X descent, and X descent is because of atrial relaxation okay x descent is because of atrial relaxation we, which i talked about in our jvp uh, uh, video so a for atrial contraction x descent is going to be for atrial relaxation the x for x okay now let's continue so our mitral is closed here after mitral closes the ventricular pressure starts increasing and the ventricle is trying to push the blood out of the ventricle onto the aorta, right? The pressure starts increasing and increasing and increasing and the aorta opens, okay? The ventricular pressure sti still keeps going up, spilling blood onto the aorta and therefore we have systole, 
okay? When we are having systole, what's happening to our bicuspid or our tricuspid valves? They should be closed, right? If they're closed and the ventricle is putting maximum pressure, should, don't you think the tricuspid, tricuspid should bulge onto the aorta? And that bulge should put pressure on the atria, on the right atria, and that pressure should put back pressure on the JVP? That's what it should happen, and that's exactly what is happening, and I'll show you. See, here is, at this point, point O2, I think, at this point, the aorta is open, okay? And then, once aorta is open, the pressure is going up in the ventricle, and the tricuspid should be closed, and when the pressure is maximum in the ventricle, when the pressure is maximum, that's when the pressure in the tricuspid is maximum. That's why this pressure, which is the tricuspid contracting onto the aorta, is corresponding very beautifully with the maximal ventricular pressure. See how beautiful that is? The timing is so perfect and this diagram is so perfect that it matches exactly. Now after the maximal pressure from the ventricle, the pressure stru starts dropping in the ventricle. When the pressure starts dropping in the ventricle, it puts less pressure onto the atria, which also is responsible for the descent onto the atria because pressure on the JVP is also dropping. So this is our X prime, right? That's our X prime. Okay, so now what's happening now? The aorta is now closing, okay? As the, as the pressure is falling, the aorta finally has the amount of pressure that it can exert to close the aortic valve, okay? So following again with the X descent, right? Now, after the aorta closes, the, after the aorta closes, or right at that moment, what's happening in the atria? The atria is filling in, right? Atria is filling and filling and filling, and that's why we have the continued X descent. But a point will come when the filling pressure is going to reach a point where it will put pressure back onto the JVP. And that venous feeling stopping to a point where the pressure is just enough is going to put some pressure back on the JVP, that is going to create our V wave. And that's when the pressure in the atria is maximal. When the pressure in the atria is maximal, that's when the mitral is going to open which is seen exactly here and that's when the blood from the atria is going to push back onto the not push back it's going to flow onto the right ventricle or left ventricle you know because this is the jvp i'm saying right ventricle which is also happening in the left ventricle the filling of the ventricular uh, phase so that also corresponds perfectly with our V pressure. So this is just not a diagram where you just look at it and understand them separately. You kind of have to know how to um, put align themselves together with the timing and see exactly what's happening because questions do come where you have to really pinpoint and find out what's happening at that particular point. So that was my interpretation of cardiac pressure effect on JVP.